Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu Wa nas'aluhu al-kiramata Fima ba'd al-mawt lana Wa li jami'i al-mu'minin Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina Wa min sayyiyati a'malina Man yahdillahu Fala mudilla lah Wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah Wa ashhadu anna sayyidana Wa sanadana wa maulana muhammada Salahu Allahu bil huda wa din al haqqi li yudhirahu ala al-deen kulli Wa lau kariha al-mushrikun wa ba'd Qala Allah ta'ala azza wa jalla fi al-kitab al-kirim A'udhu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaku allaha haqqa tuqatih ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال في آية أخرى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فاستقم كما أمرت أب معك ولا تطقوا إنه بما تعملون بصيرا وان سفيان ابن عبد الله رضي الله عنه قال قال يا رسول الله قولاً لا أسأل عنه أحدا غيرك أو بعدك فقال له رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم قل آمنت بالله ثم استقم وسأله أيضا يا رسول الله ما أخفف ما تخاف علي فأخذ الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم لسان نفسه فقال هذا كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Respected brothers, sisters, youth, children and esteemed elderly The special season Season of Rahma Maghfira The Quran Tawbah Has departed from us on Sunday We hope and pray that it, it has engraved in us sense of dignity, pride, identity, sense of belonging to our deen, to this masjid, to our community and to the ummah. Certainly it has increased sense of commitment. Commitment to ibadah, commitment to attitude and character. We have noticed culmination uh, of our ibadat, our nice attitude, and our great character during this month. But as month of Ramadan is over, we noticed with some of us that we are giving up so fast. And sometimes there is total reduction of Islamic activities and engagement with the Quran, with ibadah, and with akhlaqiyat. But for a conscious and productive Muslim, he or she maintains that cultivated energy and spirit of the month of Ramadan throughout the year. This concept of maintaining the spirit of Ramadan after the month of Ramadan, this concept of steadfastness is known in Islam as al-istiqama, persistence. Steadfastness. And according to our scholars, it means literally to go straight into the right direction, acting rightly, doing things right without any deviation. And it implies continuity in doing something good, guarding that what we are doing, Checking on ourselves, are we doing well? Or following up on what we are doing. 
making sure that it is done according to the acceptable manners, manhaj. And it also implies that there is no any crookedness in what we do. Early predecessors, companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and great Muslim scholars have uh, mentioned many beautiful quotes and shared knowledge about istiqama with us. Mujahid, rahmatullahi alayhi, said, istiqama is to be upright and firm on the kalima, la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah, until we meet the Creator. It's a very comprehensive. It is to be upright and firm on kalima until we meet our Creator. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma he said, "He al ada ala thara'id Allahi azza wa jal." That to be on istiqama means to carry out all the commands of Allah, all faraid. And then he quotes the Quran, says, "Wa'abud Rabbaka hatta yatiya kal yaqin." So it's, you cannot, you and I cannot take a vocation from Allah subhanahu wa taala. You and I cannot be just Ramadaniyin, people of Ramadan, Muslims of Ramadan. Good, alhamdulillah. But we have to go beyond. We have to be, as one of the scholars pointed out, Rabbaniyin. We always have to have that consciousness of God Almighty. Hatta ya'tiyaka yaqeen. Until certainty, meaning death, comes to you. Hassan al-Basri, rahmatullahi alayhi, said that istiqama means to be firm and upright upon the command of Allah. When God might told you to do something, you better do it. Obedient to that command. No zigzagging. I will do it, I will not do it. As well as avoid anything that is haram. One of the comprehensive, very important uh, definitions of istiqama comes from Imam, Imam, uh, Imam Fakhruddin al-Razi rahmatullahi alayhi said that istiqama is not a simple thing. It's very challenging and difficult to achieve. Reason? Because it encompasses, include iman, a'malu saliha, and akhlaq. It includes our faith, Ibadat, it includes good deeds, and it includes character. Thus the key for istiqama in our faith, my brothers and sisters, is the uprightness of our hearts and our tongues. And in several of the hadith, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa guided us that indeed, it is, uh, it is inclusive approach to our faith. Not just ibadat, but our good deeds that we do towards one another, that we do towards one Our character, our personality, our behaviors, our manners. لَا يَسْتَقِيمُ إِيمَانُ عَبْدٍ حَتَّى يَسْتَقِيمَ قَلْبُ وَلَا يَسْتَقِيمُ قَلْبُ حَتَّى يَسْتَقِيمَ لِسَانُ That our iman will not be upright until, until our hearts are upright. And our hearts will not be upright until our tongues are upright. Maybe that's the reason why when Sufyan ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu, when he asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasul Allah, قُلْ لِيَ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ قَوْلًا لَا أَسْأَلُ عَنْهُ أَحَدًا غَيْرَكَ أَوْ بَعْدَكَ Tell me the statement in Islam that I don't need to ask Anybody after you. Something comprehensive. Something that I'll carry throughout my life. He told him, Kul thumma Say, I believe, and then persist in what you say. Act upon what you said. 
And actually, this is one of the most comprehensive statements that we could see in our, in our faith. In one simple sentence, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, summarized all the mission that he was performing in 23 years. Say, I believe, and then be consistent in what you say. And then, right after that, Sufi ibn Abdullah, uh, he asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, ma akhthafu ma takhafu alayya. What is the most challenging thing that you are afraid for me? He, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, took hold of his own tongue and said this, your tongue. So we could see that Prophet is upon him guided, as in first hadith, that iman and heart and tongue must work together, just as in this hadith, Prophet peace be upon him relates our tongues with our iman, suggesting that there is an impact from our tongues on the level of our iman. So it's not just do what God Almighty asks you to do, but also avoid things that God Almighty asks you to avoid. Things that God Almighty asks you to avoid. What is interesting in this beautiful hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu when he said, "Kul amantu bidla thumma istaqim," he used this or particle uh, in 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 this sentence to suggest, "Say I believe," thumma meaning have the essence first, belief, and then consistency in what you believe. But it also could mean, according to some scholars, means ranking of the deeds. Have beliefs and then move to the next level. It's not enough of us just to say, I believe. We have to put it in action. We have to walk the talk. This message of Muhammad وسلم, has been reiterated, repeated often throughout the Quran. One particular verse is of Surah Hud. This verse was so powerful in terms of messaging of, to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that he stated to the companions when they noticed some of his hair getting gray at a very young age. Surah Hud and the likes of Surah Hud have made my head. What this verse tells us, what, what, what it tells to Muhammad وسلم, and us, فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتْ And persist as you were commanded. Don't swerve. وَمَنْ تَابَ معك. And those who make tawbah with you, basically, you Muslims, persist as you were commanded. And don't transgress. Do not go against this command. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sees all you do. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He, wrong model, is telling us, I got my hair grayed because of this verse and this surah. And, and, and strength of, of the command that made an impact on me. So we need istiqama in Ramadan and we need istiqama after Ramadan. We need istiqama at any time. Muslims throughout history, from time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in 7th, in 12th, in 21st century, need istiqama alike. We all have faced challenges. Muslims in majority Muslim countries face challenges. Muslims, majorities in the West or any other place face challenges. When Muslims understand these challenges, and that they, when they act with wisdom and courage, inshallah, they'll be successful. Challenges are not 
the problem. It is how we respond to these challenges that could become a problem. So when we face these challenges with wisdom and courage, we'll be successful. And we'll be, bring blessings to ourselves and inshallah blessings to those around us as history has proven. So now, when we have finished the month of Ramadan, you ask yourself, so how can I be persistent? What I can do to live that spirit of Ramadan after Ramadan? How can I be of those Rabbaniyin that are consistently engaged with, with deen of Allah and mindfulness of Allah? There are many evidences from, from tradition that suggest to us. Example, in Ibadah, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu guided us as uh, Ayyub radiallahu anh, narrates that Prophet peace be upon him said, Man sama Ramadana thumma atba'ahu sitan min shawwal kana ka siyam al-dahr. One who fasts Ramadan and then follows Ramadan with six days of shawwal, it would be as he or she has fasted the entire year. You don't have to fast, you know, continuously six days. You can fast, you know, throughout the shawwal. But this is one of the ways that we can continue and be consistent in ibadah after Ramadan. We can also be consistent in reading the Quran. Why Quran has to be dust collector after Ramadan? Why we don't use it? Quran was not sent to be, you know, a nice ornament in the house or the masjid. Rather, it was sent to be in our hands, in our hearts, to be used, be read, understood, acted upon. Another way is to continue being generous. Muhammad وسلم, was generous too. He was always generous. But he will be the most generous in the month of Ramadan, just as we have proven it in the month of Ramadan. But let's go back and realize that Muhammad Sallallahu was always generous. Why not continue with Qiyam when nobody is out there? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi told us, if you and I pray when everybody else is asleep, I know it's difficult. He said, actually, Muhammad told us, Pray as people are sleeping during the night. And that would give you access, inshallah, that you enter the paradise in peace. Istiqama in personal development. Month of Ramadan was indeed time for behavioral modification. Why not continue it? Why allow habits to take us back where we started from? Why not persist and change those habits? Be they anger, smoking, language, backbiting, or whatever. Why not? Live istiqam after the month of Ramadan. Because Prophet peace be upon him told us. It is not about you and I being hungry and thirsty. It is about you and I being behaviorally modified. That we don't say that we don't do something that is of action, that is munkar, inappropriate. Why not continue being generous? And I don't mean only being generous with money. I mean being generous with attitude, with smile, with kind word. All of it is tadaqah. If we don't have money, we can be generous. We can give care. We can say nice words. Why do you have to be rough and tough? Th some people think if they are mean, if, if they are rough, they are greater men. Weakness. That's what it is. Self-disrespect. And disrespect to others. 
And of course, this is an opportunity that you and I have istikama in, in da'wah. Many people have asked Muslims in every segment of our life, how can you, you know, 15, 16 hours, and you still do all of that work? Why not? Because in month of Ramadan, we gain energy, move that energy, bet, better ourselves with that energy, continue doing da'wah. That's the most effective da'wah that we can have as Muslims in North America. You talk and you don't act upon it, people not trust you. But you do and talk less, people follow you and people will be very grateful that they know you. We pray to God Almighty to make to those, inshallah, who live the spirit of Ramadan after the month of Ramadan. So what are the blessings then from istiqama? God Almighty tells us, Subhanallah. What a beautiful verse. The same could be said for Surah Ahqaf. God Almighty tells us, those who say, Rabbun Allah, Allah is our Lord, استقاموا, and they persist in what they say, تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Malaika descend, Malaika are with them. And Malaika are suggesting to them, no worries, don't be afraid, don't be sad. And then they give them glad tidings of the Jannah that they have been promised. And then God Almighty says, we are your protectors. We are your evliya. We are your supporters in dunya and the akhirah. In akhirah, you will, in Jannah, you will have anything you ask for. Anything you, you desire. And then God Almighty says, Nuzulan min ghafurir rahim. That is a hospitable gift of your Creator for you living Islam with istiqama. Wa tubu ilallahi wa istaghfiru jamiyan. Fina rasulullah kiana tubu ilallahi wa istaghfiru fi liyumi mi'ata marra. Ila inna ahsana al-kam wa ablaga al-nizam. Allah al-aziz al-allam. Kima kala Allahu tabaraka wa ta'ala fi nadmi al-kalam. Wa ila kuriya al-Qur'an wa fastamiyu lahu wa ansitu la'allakum turhamun. A'udhu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna al-deena inda Allah al-Islam. الحمد لله من الكامل والصلاه والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين تعظيما لنبيه وتكريما لفخامه شان شرف صفيه فقال عز وجل من قائل مخبرا وامرا ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا انك انت التواب الرحيم ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب اللهم انك عفو تحب العفا فاعف عنا يا رب العالمين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب Oh Allah, we ask of you to make us of those who would strengthen our Islamic identity and pride of being who we are. We ask of you, O Rabb, to help us help our children strengthen their Islamic identity. We pray to you, Ya Rabb, to help those mustada'afeen, those weak across the globe, and to stop dhalimeen, those unjust people who are making these weak people suffer. We pray to you, Ya Rabb, that you help our brothers and sisters in Palestine, in Syria, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Yemen, that you make, uh, make all those mustada'afeen across the globe, doesn't matter who they are, being protected by you, Ya Rabb, from any dhulm. We ask of you, Ya Rabb, that you save us and save all, all, all of our human brothers from COVID-19. Subhana Rabbi Karabal Izzat Yama Isifun, wa salamun ala al-Muslim, alhamdulillah. إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون وقيم